Hello again everybody. In this one I concentrate on the top and the back plates and their bracing. Um, as before I've tried not to rehash too much of what I showed last year in this video. Um, anybody interested in the gaps can go back and look at what I did last year. My working methods haven't really changed. Um, and I've also <laughs> Also, as you'll see, there's an element of um, suspense which builds up towards the end of the video, which I hope you enjoy. I won't spoil the big reveal by giving away anything now, but uh, at the end you'll find out the mistake I made. It's, uh, it's fixable, but it's, uh, it's a stupid error. I hope you enjoy it.
Now all he takes is just her schlitz on his lips. Are glued on, and um, of course, some of you may have noticed that I haven't put a reinforcement strip in um, for the joint along the back, the two halves of the plates. Um, I normally do the traditional top off cut, you know, with um, cross grain softwood here, but I thought this time I'd do something a little bit different, so I've cut some strips of the ash off cuts from the back and I'm going to make little um, like buttons to put along the seam because I think it looks quite nice it's just as strong I'm sure as um, as the softwood one and I just thought I'd try something new so here I'm just tidying up the straight edges small pieces like this it's easier to to um, put the plane keep the plane stationary and move the piece because it's very hard to hold little pieces like this I mean I have got vice I could do it in but um, anyway this is easier get the more as a standard width and then I'm going to plane a chamfer on the what will be the long edge. I think the buttons won't be square, they'll be slightly rectangular just to give a bit more of a spread about the on either side of the seam. So to get the chamfer I just angle it. I don't know if that shows up on the camera but there's a there's a nice chamfer now on both sides and I'll I'll do one on the ends as well when I cut the buttons out but I'll do that with a chisel. I'm going to have far more than I need if I cut all these up but I will do because you never know when this kind of thing can come in useful for repairs or whatever in the future or even for more buttons on a on a dark wood back could look quite nice actually okay well I don't think I'm going to use more than 10 on one guitar so that gives me enough for two I'm trying to get the chamfer on the end roughly the same as the the one on the side just for the look of the thing and to square up the end. Don't know quite how that happened with my high tech saw bench hook thing. Anyway. So looking at it, I think nine will be enough. This this is obviously just roughly placed. The um, heel block will come out to here, so I don't need more than one here. 
and then two between each brace and the tail block is much thinner of course so that will only come out to about there so nine per guitar that leaves me a couple of spares for if I screw up can see the underside of the top and um, I've already glued the bridge plate in place which uh, was cut from some um, offcuts from the back um, and the next job is to glue these small braces down um, they go before the X brace because they're interlocked with the X brace so the first thing I need to do is to create a small projection like a tenon here at the bottom which will engage with a, um, a mortise in the X brace which I'll cut separately afterwards. Okay so now I'm going to use a, um, a razor saw or something very thin to saw not all the way down because I have a little jig which will ensure the joints between these braces and the X braces where the, they insert into the X brace, those joints are all tight, um, and I, I use a Dremel, um, I'll show you later. Um, but you can get rid of a lot of the, the waste on the uh, shoulder here with a saw and just flipping it out with a chisel. These are actually deeper than they will be um, and I'll get them to the right height using a Dremel jig which I can also use for the recesses in the X brace so they match exactly. Here's my Dremel jig for cutting the, um, the height of the little tenons on these brace ends which are going to interlock with the X braces. It's about as simple as you can imagine. It's just a strip um, three millimeters thick in this case which will be the final height of the tenons and um, to to cut tenons I simply set the Dremel bit to the height of the piece there there's no play but it slides freely um, so this now I'll use to cut the the tenon height and then when the time comes to do the uh, mortises in the X brace I use the same jig it's got a gap in it here and I'll set the Dremel base on it like that and just push the bit down till it hits the, um, the floor between the gap and then of course it's exactly the same height um, in the other direction so as I said incredibly simple but it works. And after a bit of tidying up with the chisel, here are the braces with their little tenons ready to be glued down. I still need to cut tenons on the end of these two and cut them to length because they will key into the uh, transverse brace here at the top. So now with all these um, small braces ready to go the next job is actually to fit the X braces together to get the half lap joint in the middle done um, so that it can be dry fitted and the positions of the mortises on the X brace legs can be marked and then cut out. When I mark out the X brace um, half lap joint, I start by marking 
just the uh, the upper line. I won't rely on the pencil lines because I need the exact thickness of, of the brace, not, not what it's drawn to be. So I mark both sides here. Very hard to see, but I can feel it with the knife blade. And I'm going to join this up. So there'll be a line across here. Then I put the the actual brace in place on the line and mark the opposite side of it. Then I'll have the correct thickness. So now I don't know if it comes out on the camera, but I have there and there. Now I'm going to do the other, the same thing on the other brace. So this one I've marked on the upper straight side because that's where the um, that's where the, the cut is going to go. So the the overlap will be like this. And then when you've double and triple and quadruple checked, you've got everything the right way around and all the angles right. I normally write top left, top right, just to make sure I can always more easily line them up again. This is how it looks marked up. I've quadruple checked all the angles are correct. So now with the X brace in place, I'm going to mark the positions of the other line of braces in a similar way. So The X brace is all marked out now for the cutouts um, for the smaller braces which will be glued on in advance so the X brace will be the last one to go on. Um, I'm going to start with the two above the sound hole so I'm, I'm just going to saw down um, probably somewhat less than the three millimeters that uh, is needed then I'll set up the Dremel with a, a small bit using my simple jig to get the depth right and um, route a little bit out of each just to see where the level is and tidy it up with a chisel as always. So now I've got out of each piece the, the depth I need. Yeah, that's a pretty good fit. Here are the two finger braces fitted, just dry fitted obviously. So now the only one left to do is the um, tone bar, which I'll do next.
This is now a complete uh, dry fit of all the braces I've done so far, which is all except the transverse brace. Um, and what I'm going to do is use tape to mark the positions of these when the X brace is correctly placed. It won't be glued down at the same time as I've said. This will make sure that when it is glued down, it goes back exactly as it is now. So I mark the end point and the slope of all these small braces. final dry run just before I glue these little braces in place um, is to check that if I put them where I've marked with the tape and then fit the X brace over that everything all the joints look tight and they all do yep. the X brace is not pinned down at all but it's going to be fine so I can go ahead and start gluing. Okay so all the small braces are now glued on and the glue is dry. Um, in case anyone's wondering why we don't glue um, all the braces down at once and then it might be easier to make sure they fit together and um, the reason is because now I can shape these without the X brace getting in the way. It's very much easier to do it like this. Really the only important part to shape before the X brace goes on is the is the parts right next to the X brace. I can I can refine these afterwards. So I'll probably leave it here for now. I'll do this arm on first and then this this one. Um, I've done it the other way where you glue the X brace together first and glue everything in place all at once but with high glue especially there's a bit of time pressure and I always panic probably overly so about um, the glue gelling before I have time to get everything in place so I prefer when I can when it looks as if it's going to work and this does to do it one, one leg of the X brace at a time Here's how it looks after the X-Brace glue up. 
um, things look nice and tight so I think I'm happy with everything I just need to uh, start carving the X braces now the first thing I'm going to do is cut a piece off the end of this brace here quite thin and the the end will be curved right down to nothing anyway so I'm just going to cut a chunk out which will make the piece which bridges this gap here there we go now despite being careful to brush away um, chips of wood and things I've noticed there's a small dent here so I'm going to steam that out and then put a protective piece of um, thick paper over the front of the guitar because it's, it's just too risky. So the dent is just here. There's a, actually a few, you know, minor dents. It's a compound dent, if I can call it that. So get some water on it. Well, there you have it. Um, so I now have my nicely braced back plate, which I'm happy with. And I also have a nicely braced top plate, which I'm nearly happy with. The problem being that um, I meant to put a, a bevel on the edge, like I did in last year's GGBO. Um, I've since, that was the first time I've made that um, kind of arm bevel and I've since made another guitar which turned out fine and I intended to do it on this one. Um, but I glued all the braces on which makes bending much more difficult. So what I've done is to pare away the X brace down to nothing, um, this arm, just where the bend will be and I've also tailed off the tone bar a little earlier than it was originally. So I'm hoping to be able to bend, put a bend from about that point onwards um, with the braces in place, which will be an interesting exercise. So uh, when I get the bending iron out to do the sides, which will be the next major job, and 
part of the subject of the next video, I'm sure, um, I'll be doing this as well. So until then, goodbye for now.